We're going to try to take a look at the um, very large world of AK-47 drum magazines. I guess to start out with, there are drum magazines and there are box magazines. And uh, the box magazines, most people are familiar with, they load and then as they load, they double stack or they stagger down the, the box and there's a spring that compresses and they feed the, the rounds that way. Um, the, the drum magazines come in two different styles. This is a 75 round drum where the rounds again feed from the top. as they would in a box magazine. In fact, it's very much like a box magazine at the top here. Uh, but then they go in and, and feed into this 75 round drum. And you can sort of see on the back here the, the spiral shape that the rounds would eventually take. And there's a, a spring in there that's a coil spring. There's a second type of uh, drum magazine, typically more popular and that's this style where the rounds are placed into it and then uh, the spring is then tightened with this key on the back. So there's a couple of different styles of the drum magazines. These all happen to be 75 rounds. Um, most of them, well there's definitely, these all happen to be 75 round drums. Uh, there's also 100 round drums which are the same basic thing they're just a little bit larger diameter and they hold another 25 rounds. To sort of illustrate 75 rounds, these are 10 round stripper clips. So I'll move some of these out of the way. And this gives you an idea of how many rounds we're talking about in a 75 round drum. So it definitely holds quite a bit of ammunition. A typical AK-47 magazine holds just 30 rounds of ammunition. So definitely a lot more in a drum. Of course, when we're talking about 75 rounds of ammunition, we're talking about quite a bit of weight. So I'll just stack them up real quick here. Bring out our scale. And we're going to see how much it to zero there. See how much that 70 found, 75 rounds of ammunition weighs. Now there's a little bit of added weight because of the stripper clips, but not very much. So we're at 2 pounds, 15.4 ounces, very close to 3 pounds worth of ammunition there. And it depends on what kinds you're using. We're using some Chinese ammunition. Let's take a weight of one of these 75 round drums of this style course empty. That drum weighs 2 pounds 1.9 ounces. Here's another type from a different country. 2 pounds 1.5 ounces. So just a hair different. Now we'll try a 75 round drum of a different variety. This one weighs 1 pound 15.6 ounces. 15.6, 2 pounds, 1.5. So we're not very much different. A couple of ounces more for this uh, style of drum magazine. Um, All together, we're talking about 5 pounds, a little more than 5 pounds for a loaded 75 round drum. To compare that with the 30 round magazine, we'll just go ahead and simulate a loaded one there would be 1 pound 14.7 ounces, so just under 2 pounds for a 30 round magazine, fully loaded. The uh, drums come in a couple of different varieties as I mentioned. They also um, were made in different countries. And I don't have every one out here, but I do have a couple. This is a Russian drum, and we can tell from the paint job and from some of the markings that this one's probably Russian. We have this one from Romania, which is the same style, but there's some subtle differences. 
and I'm not sure how well these differences will show up on the uh, video here, but um, for example, this ridge runs right up to the neck there, where on this one the ridge stops quite a bit away from the neck. Um, on this one, the, the stamped sheet or the sheet of steel that is stamped here has one notch in the rear and then a fold up front, where this style has a notch and then a notch up front instead of this fold. It doesn't have anything here because it doesn't come up so far. So that's some minor differences that help to distinguish the Romanian style from, the, from a Russian. There's some other countries that made this style of drum as well. Then in this style of drum, this one happens to be Bulgarian. And we've got, the rest of these are Chinese. So um, some of the differences there. The key, you'll notice, has a slot in some of these, and in some of them, the slot, the key is solid. In this particular one, we know it's Bulgarian because it has a circle and a 10 down here at the bottom, and that's a Bulgarian um, factory mark or country mark. This one, which also has the slot, has a 9396, which is a code for one of the Chinese uh, factories, so we know that this is a Chinese drum. These drums with the solid keys are actually both identical and they have a star, or excuse me, a triangle 36. So these are just factory marks that tell us where they were made. And um, collectors might look at these two, which are both factory uh, triangle 36, but if they looked very closely at them, they'll find some differences here and there. Now I'm not an expert, but um, you know, just looking at it, I don't see too many differences really. There's a chance these were made fairly close to each other, but what I was hoping to show was some differences over time. And I think I found one here. So the this sort of handle that's attached to the bottom of these drums to make them, I guess, easier to carry um, are attached with spot welding. And on this one, again, they're identical factories. This one, the spot welding is basically done five times, it looks like, or also very sloppy six times, where this one is a very neat six times. Now that could be a difference in time when they were made. It could be just a difference between two people in the factory making it. That could be the tough part or the interesting part of collecting. And I'm noticing things on the, uh, the same differences in spot welding there. You would look for differences in hinges, differences in attachment areas, differences in folds and cuts. I don't see a lot of differences here, so these are fairly similar. Um, where again, if we take the Bulgarian and the Chinese here, we're bound to find some real differences, mostly with the tools they used, because the factories were literally just different factories. So that's some of the basic uh, differences, I guess. Um, they're different ways of carrying them. This is this style and it opens up in the back. This is neat because it allows you to still use it on the gun in this um, pouch, but the pouch can also uh, easily be worn on a belt or um, attached to a belt or slung over a, you know, tied to a pack or something. So these are uh, pretty handy little pouches made out of a, like vinyl. This pouch I'm not sure where this pouch comes from. I suppose it, uh, you know, is, is designed to be some sort of a drum type of pouch, but it's sort of a hybrid and had different materials sewn to it by now. And uh, again, allows this pouch, the mag, to be carried, and then it's importantly carried once it's empty, because you're not going to throw something like this away. These typically, at this point, cost about $200 or more. Sometimes a lot more, depending on uh, if it happens to be a rare one or if it's in a part of the country where you can't get them, there's, there's definitely dry spells on these. Sometimes they'll come around, sometimes they'll be gone for months and months. Um, I just brought this one out. It's an exaggerated example of a box magazine. Um, it's a 50 round, and it's really just a novelty. It doesn't work real well. Um, it wouldn't be reliable, and uh, it's just sort of an interesting thing to compare these two. Once I get to uh, this next phase, I thought I'd plug them into a rifle here, so there's a Sega rifle, and uh, the magazines, the drum magazines, fit right in just the way a normal magazine would. 
these style that open in the back fit sort of straight on the rifle or when I plug in this style you'll notice that it's at an angle on the rifle and all right so we're taking a look here at these uh, AK-47 drums the AK-47 uses the 762 by 39 ammunition All right, awful lot of ammunition there. We're going to go ahead and uh, load it into a drum mag. A lot of people um, have trouble with these until they figure out how to use them. So there's these two clips on the sides. Just push them with your thumbs. They're spring steel. They're hinged so they fall right out of the way. They go right back up. They won't really wear out ever unless something breaks them. Then the lid opens, the lid indexes on a little screwdriver type, like little nub there. And there's a hole in the lid here where that little oval uh, peg lines up. That time I had a little trouble because the key had turned just a bit. And you can see on the inside of the key, there's four fingers and they line up with this knob thing here and these two wings right underneath it. This center is a button and I just pushed it real hard and released the tension on the spring. Alright, so we're taking a look at this uh, Chinese style, it's a Bulgarian actually, um, drum and we're opening up the back with those clasps. It opens on a hinge on the back here and it can be a little complicated if you haven't used it before. So what we're looking at is a, as an inside carriage with a, sort of some shapes here that'll make some sense in a moment. It's got an inside button that is the spring release. It's got the two wings there that are uh, for winding the spring. And then it's got this follower. If we can see it come up into place there. Right, that's this follower right here. Goes up the channel there. And that's basically, consider that the last round in the magazine. So if we follow that last round, I'm going to put my finger on it. And I'm going to start turning it around. And I'm creating all kinds of spring tension as I do this. Once I get to here, I'm going to stick my thumb in there to try to stop it. Once I get to here, you notice it goes from touching the outside of the wall to coming down and now it's on the second row. If we look at one of these from the outside, whoops, if we look at one of these from the outside, we see that there's this spiral shape like a maze going down towards the center and that's what we just, we came down to that second row. So now if you follow it along again, under quite a bit of spring tension so I'm having to use both fingers to hold it there. It's about to go down to the center row so now it's touch center and I'm gonna just keep turning it basically until I can't turn it any further. It won't turn any further it's gone all the way to the bottom it's pegged out on the bottom. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is start adding some ammo to the top here on the outside row and you see that that shape might make a little more sense now it's basically two and one two and one so now as I let the spring go you'll notice that they're starting to fall into place up at the top there so I added some along the top row And they came up towards the top here 
They're coming up through the tower. Oops, a bunch of them just fell out the back. They went through the tower and they're being held by the top lip. So now that lip is stopping this all this spring tension right now from shooting all these these rounds out of the magazine. Otherwise, there's a lot of spring tension in here that wants to spin this carriage in a in a counterclockwise motion and push those rounds up. So right now there's quite a bit of weight on this front lip. So now let's take, take a look at what we're going to do. We've got all that spring tension and that was created by pulling this last round follower all the way around to the end of the to its little destination there. So now we're going to push on this on this center part and that's going to release the spring tension. Took a little effort. I had to push real hard. So now there's no spring tension. Now everything's loose and there's no tension on this lip up here. Everything's just happy as can be. And now you can just load at your leisure and it's fairly easy to load this one. That's I think why most people like it. It's a little complicated to figure it out but really once you figured it out there's nothing to it and uh, they're a heck of a lot of fun to shoot. Okay, so I screwed up a little bit and I only got 74 rounds in there. Um, I suppose it's somewhere in here that I screwed up, but in any case, I got 74 rounds into it. You see that they go in in a pretty cool little pattern there. And now I just close the back and I snap it. And now there's 75 rounds under no spring tension at all. However, there is a little bit of a spring here that, uh, there's a little spring on the inside of this tower that is going to keep this um, round from shooting out because even though it's under no tension we don't want it to just fall out so now it's ready to go and the nice part about these this style is now when I want to use the magazine since it's under no spring tension I have to wind it back up there's a little arrow there and you basically turn the crank on the back the key in a clockwards uh, clockwise uh, direction and there's a ratchet in there and the rounds are going to sort of shuffle into place and there we go so now it doesn't really want to go any further it's, it's all the way under tension now so now the rounds are gonna come out you know as the rifle fires bang 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 and it does make a little bit of noise as every as the carriage starts to turn so there's the inside another round goes off bang 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 so it's kind of neat watching 75 rounds pour out Well, you get the picture. I'm not going to keep going. It's hurting my thumb. But um, basically, you see how it would go out. Now, let's say you shot that 10, I don't know how many that is, 25 rounds there, and you didn't want to shoot the rest of these. No problem. Open up the back. You know, of course, to shoot it, you'd have the back all clipped. Again, it's under spring tension, and it's about halfway shot, but it doesn't matter. It's ready to go. But if you're going to be storing it for any length of time, no problem. Come in push the button you've released all the spring tension again and now there's no spring tension on the magazine uh, you can store it I guess basically indefinitely I'd say and um, 
I just need to turn that key a little bit. And then, uh, again, whenever you need it again, crank her back up. Get that spring tension back again. Shoot. Get done shooting. Just a great magazine. Um, made out of spring steel. The entire thing is sheet metal, but it's high quality sheet metal. I haven't um, seen a f many of these break. I've seen some that were destroyed by uh, stuff falling on them because they're not, you know, they're little metal boxes, but they're not uh, bulletproof. So um, when something real heavy squishes them, they do squish. Um, everything's spot welded to it, so there's not really a lot of repairs that can be done. Notice everything is just spot welded everywhere. So once it is broken, it's basically trashed. But uh, great investments if you shoot an AK and just want to have fun or for, uh, you know, preparation. Um, just keeping some, you know, stuff for security. Nothing wrong with having a couple of these drums, you know, 300 rounds. With four of these drums, you get 300 rounds. And, uh, you know, under no spring tension can be basically stored indefinitely. Um, you get these pouches so you can carry them over your shoulder. Um, they work with just about any AK. With this style, you uh, sort of hold it like this so that your your thumb does the work and your right hand just sort of feeds rounds in. And each time you pull that lever, it ratchets the spring tension down a hair and drops that round in. And to shoot it, of course, it's always under spring tension. Bang, 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 bang. So um, very similar to the other one as far as how it feeds, but uh, quite different as far as you can't release the spring tension. You, you put them in and that creates spring tension. Um, they're in a similar layout, but you can't really have access to the back. Now that being said, you can repair them if there's a problem or if they get dirty. There's a notch here for a screwdriver, and for me that means uh, AK-47 bayonet. So you cram the bayonet in there, and then this nut just sort of comes off. You can see the shape. It just sort of cams on there. And then uh, that allows you to take this whole back section off. And unlike the Chinese style, there's not walls here. So if this was full of ammo when you did this, all the ammo would pour out on you. Um, but it does let you get in there for cleaning you can really see the spring in this one because it's not captured like it is on the Chinese style and definitely a de different inside a different carriage so completely different this one's quite well lubed up which is a good sign I don't see any rust in there and it's interesting I can see some some more proof marks in here and some more numbers so uh, to help identify again for a collector it's worth opening these up it looks like okay so that just fits back on and then this nut comes back and because it's going back on this little spring pressure thing just snaps into place and now it's ready to go again again that's not something that you'd want to take apart when it's full or try to load it that way it only loads under spring tension with your thumb here so that's this style these are a little cheaper for the longest time you know these were 100 and these were 75 but good luck these days they're real tough to get a hold of if you can find them um, I've seen these go for $400 the Bulgarians maybe a little less 350 because they came out just recently but the Chinese they uh, haven't been imported since the 1990s they're um, you know rare so there was only so many of them that came into the country and people that know what they've got know what they've got and they don't just give them away so like I say, I've seen the Chinese style go up to 400 already. It's more than I would pay for them. I bought mine back when they were a little cheaper. And you can see we've got quite a collection of them here when we put our, all, all of ours together. Um, but it's nice to have a drum. If, if just for planking, it's fun. But like I say, for you know defending a home or something, um, depending on what you're defending it against, you know having a drum can really be a benefit. So hopefully this was a little introduction to uh, drums. Probably went on a little long, but... Uh, there's quite a bit to them. We didn't include the Yugoslavian drums. We think there's probably East German drums out there. Um, 
and uh, I'm probably forgetting a couple. Nice thing about collecting AK-47 stuff is there's uh, always something new coming around. There's always a warehouse of new stuff that gets found. And for the most part, a lot of this stuff is fairly cheap to, to collect. I happen to be featuring something that's a little more expensive, but uh, definitely an interesting thing to collect and a fairly fun and useful thing to have as well. So the AK-47 uh, 75 round drums. And then just in case it wasn't obvious, um, let's say you have it filled, you've pushed the button, you don't have it on tension or anything, and you need to uh, empty it or you want to empty it for whatever reason, it's just as easy as doing this. All the rounds are out except for a few here, and I'll just let gravity pull them down. And that spring there just kind of barely holds them in place. Or I guess I can come out back them out this way. And uh, it's that easy to empty it. But it's just as easy to store one of these loaded as it is unloaded. So most guys I know just will keep these loaded. So there's another view of 75 rounds of ammo.